Hi everyone, Gray Power 60 here. I hope I had the sound up. I had it down low when I was playing games. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to a little uh, tea with me today. Um, I have had an amazing response to my videos, the before and after, um, going through my room. And uh, one of the things that I had done earlier was put my iMac in my room thinking I wanted to make that room a little office area which you know was sort of a good idea <laughs> however um, what I noticed was that I would take my iMac put it close to my bed and watch movies all night and then I couldn't sleep and of course this is after doing crafting in here and videotaping and editing and getting all of that and uploading and um, if I'm feeling a little choked up today I had a bit of a an emotional uh, morning this morning uh, I couldn't fall asleep at all last night I knew I had a doctor's appointment at 10 15 and uh, I set my alarm for nine o'clock and then I thought no I'm just going to lay here for a minute and I'm going to get up. Well, I fell back to sleep and woke up at 5 to 10. Well, talk about rush. And in my mind, I kept thinking my appointment was 10, 10. So as I'm driving there, which is about a 15 minute drive, uh, a little fast, I guess. When I was driving there trying to find, you know, the quickest route to get there, um, I hadn't had a cup of tea. I, I threw on my clothes. I ran out the door and uh got there and i was only like two or three minutes late it was actually 10 15 not 10 10 but thank god in my head i kept thinking i got to get there by 10 10 and when i saw that it was 10 14 i went oh my god as i'm parking the car i'm late so by the time i got up there i was only a few minutes late but i have a lot of testing that i was supposed to get done um uh after a mom passed away I didn't feel like doing anything. Let's try not to get emotional here. But it was a bit of uh, an emotional morning. And uh, the doctor is great. He is amazing. He, you know, I have to go for uh, the usual, you know, mammogram, pap smear, um, I need to check my blood pressure, but he said, like, it was probably high because I, uh, got up, ran, and panicked, and, you know, all of that, you know, does isn't doing good when you just kind of go calmly, you're there early, and you're ready, and, you know, so... Uh, anyway, I've got a lot of testing to get done. I've got a lot of calling to make. Um, I still have three or four places that I need to get information for uh, because of mom's passing. They need more information. They need more, more. They always need more. And um, then my car brakes go. And there is a thousand dollars, you know, right there that I didn't have uh, because I had gotten tires at the end of January, which depleted my savings as I started to build uh, my savings because I was so used to mom and I living together really comfortably uh, with both of our pensions. We were very comfortable. And when when mom had to be placed and she was only there for a month and a half. Um, of course, that took her pension away. So um, from November to now, um, I'm having to deal with uh, living alone in this apartment. And, and that's fine. Uh, I'm going to do okay. Eventually, I've just got, there's so many things coming up. I need a cup of tea. I definitely need a cup of tea. As I said before, you know, we were living comfortably. We ate well. We didn't have to worry about, you know, if the car breaks down, we had the money for it. And, uh, you know, regular checkups, you know, maintenance things always need to get done. And that's fine. Um, but 
in the last few months, I've kind of put things off a lot. And um, uh, one of the things is going through going through mom's stuff. Hold on. Okay, get myself together here. Yeah, have a cup of tea. So, um, I think a lot of things, you know, the reason why I'm not sleeping at night and things like that is I've got like two, two things going on. One is my YouTube channel and making sure I get my videos out. And I do uh, pre-record, so I have I have some ahead, which is fine. And even if I don't, um, you know, missing one day or two, it's not a big deal. But this is my relief, my stress reliever, uh, my playtime. Oh, I keep looking in the wrong spot. Sorry, guys. Um, this is my playtime. This is something that I love to do. And um, the problem... You know, we've we've talked about it, many of you, in, in the comments, when you're done, clean up. That's okay if it's like four in the morning and you're absolutely exhausted. I'll do it tomorrow. And usually I'm pretty good. I usually put things away um, somewhat. But I, I got into the bad habit of, of and, and we get kind of, I think, trapped. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't had more morning tea. I think we get trapped into thinking that we have to have um, this and we have to have that. And, um, you know, so I wasn't throwing out cereal boxes, container boxes, uh, you know, things like that. I started hoarding them. And then it was, I think it was somebody's comment. And then I realized... I'm always going to have a cereal box. I'm always going to have some kind of um, cardboard container for something. Um, I'm always going to have some, so why should I hoard it? So it's now out in this foyer. I have a box that I am, um, I have bag, gar big garbage bags uh, for recycling to go downstairs full of paper bags, paper, paper things, things that my, my recycle bin and so on that goes downstairs. I've got one that's for plastic, one's for paper. Um, and I've got a box that's starting to build for donation, just, just to get rid of it. But the whole purging thing, I think, is that I have so many things I have to do. There's so many things, um, regarding mom's passing that I have to deal with, that I've been avoiding. And and the avoidance has been um, coming into my craft room and the world will go away and, and everything is great. Um, the problem with that is you gotta face it eventually. And I think today became the day that I realized um, I can't put things off anymore and um, some things I've put off for two or three months that really need to get done. And thank goodness I have a few videos for this week that are already recorded and um, I can uh, tackle. Um, today I have three things to tackle. Um, I have to go to Mum's old bank and uh, they want all kinds of paperwork that I, I have in a folder here in my purse to go. Um, they always want to make appointments, you know. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to just walk in there and see somebody or just leave it with them, have them photocopy it, leave it with them and they can contact me if they need any information. These appointment things drive me nuts. They just drive me crazy. Um, I'm not, I used to be, isn't it funny? I used to be the one who made appointments. I had a, a calendar or actually it was a handheld little uh, folder calendar that you get the Dollar Tree or whatever. And all my appointments, I had them and I was just so on top of things. 
And then uh, when mom had to go into care and then when she passed away shortly after, um, which still gets my goat, it still, it still haunts me. Um, yeah, I don't want to go there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there's stuff that I need to get done. And uh, being an executor to someone's estate is really, really a pain in the ass. <laughs> However, let's get back to the whole purging thing and some great suggestions from you uh, from my comment section. Absolutely, you know, supportive uh, suggestions, tips, and stuff like that. There's a lot of things that you guys have been helping me with and making me feel so much better. So, as an example, I don't have to save all that cardboard. I can go and take a cereal box from my, my um, pantry, take the bag out, leave the bag in there, and use the box. I mean, I don't need to hoard it. And, uh, and that, that is something I was doing and it was making a mess in my kitchen because I would have a bag sitting there throwing in these boxes that I need to break up and fold and put away. Um, you know, kind of that, that kind of stuff. That's all going in recycle now. I don't need it. I have got enough. I've got enough. As a matter of fact, I got too much. I'm going to get rid of some of that as well. And as I mentioned in my video, when I um, took things out of here, nothing that was on shelves, but everything that was on the floor um, and around me that needed to be sorted and needed to be given some loving care, um, yes, I'm purging. I'm purging a lot. Some of it is trash. Some of it, like like saving those boxes or or bags and bags of, I've got bags of uh, used legal size, uh, legal size, I guess, whatever, uh, envelopes. I don't need all of those. I'm never going to use them all, so I'm not saving any more. Any mail that I get, which is really not a lot. Uh, there has been a little bit more since Mom passed, but not a lot. Um... I guess that's why I started hoarding it, because I didn't think I was getting enough mail. But um, you get advertising crap in the mail. You get all kinds of stuff. You know, they want you to join. They want you to do blah, blah, blah. Um, I just chuck it now. I'm, I'm just chucking it. I'm not saving anything uh, from that. And I'm purging, and I've got two big boxes in my foyer <laughs> that um, I call it a foyer. It's my entranceway. It used to be my dining room. I've, we've never used it as a dining room. Um, but uh, I have boxes in there and things that are ready to be gone. Um, I got, I, and I've only got two. There's no keep in my, in, in my scenario here. My purging is trash, donate, trash, donate. That's it. Um, I don't need anything in here. Um, the boxes and things that I have down in storage are um, seasonal. I think there's only one box down there that is all crafting stuff. Um, it's not a very large box, but everything is seasonal. I've got Easter, I've got St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, and Christmas. And Christmas is the big one. Now, the Christmas one... I have uh, things in there that I've had for years for decorating my apartment. I haven't been decorating lately. Um, the last time I decorated, I think, was about... <coughs> excuse me. I mean, really decorated with a tree and put things in the windows and, and creating, crafting... Uh, stars and things and dangles and stuff and put it out and garland and and so on um, I think it was about five years ago when mom was still quite lucid and loved it and she really enjoyed it um, 
And then as mom declined and her recognition of birthdays, me being her daughter, uh, Christmas, uh, her birthday, especially her birthday, although when I did make a cake for her or, or get one made and gave her a gift, she was really excited about that. <coughs> Sorry. I have got to stop the cough. I told my doctor about coughing. I said, especially when I'm laying down, and he said it's the post-nasal drip because I am stuffed up. Uh, and here I'm thinking it's my lungs, it's not, it's my throat, which is basically where, you know, when you're coughing. <coughs> and when you're talking too much. <laughs> <coughs> and I, uh, I need to do a little bit of something to clear that up. Anyway, I made a few notes here that I wanted to talk about. Um, my craft room is perfect right now. It is perfectly laid out. I can reach for things where I know they are. I'm happy with that. I, I moved my high boy from right here in front of me to behind me. And my high boy, the top part, is all other than paper crafting, journaling, things like that, goes in there. I gotta cough again, just a moment. So, I went and regrouped, got a little tea, and went through some of your comments, and very suggestive, very good, honest, um, heartfelt suggestions wonderful. Uh, I do not need any more um, tables. I don't need any more uh, containers. I don't need any more shelving. Um, I think that uh, that just created more, let's just put it there for now and forget about it, instead of actually uh, creating uh, functional spaces for my goodies so I am NOT buying anything else people have suggested suggested taking the um, doors out of my closet as I said because this is a rental that's rather an impossible thing um, and I like the doors closed so that I can't see what's in there but I do have a lot of empty containers in there I do um, when I took everything of mums out of there and, um, have them in another, in another area, um, I brought in stuff that I haven't gone through yet. I haven't even checked. Um, a lot of them are empty, but, um, by keeping there and keeping the door closed, I don't have to be overwhelmed and tackle that. That's why when I was filming and showing with the door open, the, the stacks of containers of things that I have in there, if I close that door, I can tackle one thing at a time. And that's the whole issue, is to tackle one thing at a time until you feel good about it. And the one thing that I really needed for me, for me personally, <coughs> sorry, was to have my table under the window where I'm getting that natural light. And even at night, I love to have my window open and that cool breeze. Last couple of nights have been really cold, cool, wonderful to sleep. And, um, and uh, so the way I've got it set up right now, that corner unit, that corner unit, I have nothing in there but junk. I mean, I just put things that were out of place on my desk, on this table, in there to tackle later. I'm not going to worry about it. But um, one of the hardest things for me to do, <clears throat> let's take another sip. One of the hardest things for me to do is to ask for help. I have two children. I have a daughter who's a nurse with three boys, a very busy life, and a husband. 
I've got a son with a wife and two boys and he has a very busy life and um, that's my little family and it is very difficult for me to ask them for help and it's um, it's it's because I don't want to impose on them things that I am quite capable of doing on my own I just have to you know, bite the bullet, you know, up, stiff upper lip and, and get on with it and do it. But every once in a while, hurt feelings creep in, little things creep in, um, mom's passing, her things that are in the closet out there, things of hers that are, I don't know what to do with, you know, and, and, um, what do you do with all of the the golfing plaques for all of like her hole in ones and her tournaments and that she was so proud of what do i do with those wooden pieces do i tear them apart and repurpose them do i just donate them like who would want something with someone else's name on it these are the kind of questions and problems that i I, I started getting into when I first started going through mom's things and uh, and then I found myself going I'm not going to deal with that now it's something that I can't figure out what to do with so mom's things are put aside I've even got two suitcases of her winter clothes in in my closet I could easily take them out open them up donate just donate right that's all I've got to do and then I'm looking at the hordes of stuff that's out in my hall um, or dining room if you want to call it that we never used it as a dining room but anyway I said that before um, things that are in there that I need to get rid of to trash to donate to trash to donate no keeping no keeping I have got two, three boxes, um, I think three, I got one Christmas, but I decided to keep it up here because I'm going to be doing some Christmas in July, uh, repurposing and, and kind of craft fair ideas, items that, that I want to do and they're all in that box. So I've decided to keep that up here, but I've also got some other things to go through. There's an Easter one in there, and I think I mentioned in um, another video, I have made up some uh, paper bags that I call the craft mystery bag um, that's going to have 25 items in it for $25, and um, put that on Kijiji. I think if anyone on here, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, I'm just putting it out there. Anyone in Canada who would like to receive probably more than 25 items, but a $25 box, um, that means that $25 box, I've got to pay $20 for the box. I think it's 18 something, and you can put as much in it as you want. It's kind of like your postal um, boxes in the States where you can buy that box and you can fill it right up and mail it out. At one price well I can't you know do that for the states I would have to go and find out how much it would cost and I think it goes by weight weight and size so I would have to get that information if anyone in the states wants to buy sort of a mystery box right um, and I thought of of putting out a little to de-stash my stuff because some of it is really good and I don't want to donate it all of it um, it would be nice to get some money back for some of the things that I've collected over the years um, anyway um, I thought maybe what I would do on here is put together uh, a spread of what is going to be going into that box or into that grab bag and uh, mystery bag 
kind of just give an overview without showing everything so that I don't have to itemize every single thing so that someone who's not getting that every single thing won't be disappointed. I don't want that. I want them to be surprised. I want them to be happy with what they're getting. And, um, and kind of like, you know, kind of like a happy meal, but selling. So, um, the problem with that is that, uh, I hate my PayPal. I hate PayPal. I just hate them. Um, the only way that I get money is to make sure that anyone who is sending me it, don't send it as business, send it as you're a friend or a family member. Um, if you send it by business, they hold it, trying to figure out what kind of business I am. I'm not even a business. I'm a personal one person who wants to send money to someone or to, you know, and not a business to personal so I kept it as a family, but they're starting to treat it like a business and it's driving me nuts. So I'm not liking PayPal at all. However, that's all I can do. So if I'm, you know, going to be selling anything. So that's just something I'm throwing out there for you guys. It's, it's, you know, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I am babbling on, but I'm trying to get over my emotional nonsense and trying to um, give you some quality content. It's a little hard to give you quality content when I'm chatting away. However, the reason that the office spot in my bedroom was not a good idea is I need, desperately need, a room that is an oasis that is my you know quiet place that I go into and I can't remember last year the year before I don't remember I reorganized my whole bedroom it was perfect until I found that my living room was becoming overcrowded with my craft stuff and I had to put that back oh I'm getting I'm getting thumbs up I'm getting thumbs up here thumbs up I don't know if that's still working. Anyway, I got a thumbs up. Yeah, so um, I want my bedroom to be back to a nice, quiet oasis. Um, I have mom's dresser in my room that I'm going to paint. So another project, right? I'm doing all kinds of things. But these are these are future uh, Donna problems. You know, these are future things that I want to see in my room. Um, things that are in the living room that I want to bring into my bedroom that's going to make it feel like um, a quiet place where you can just read a book or just relax and watch a movie, you know, not with my iMac. Um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I want so I want, I don't want my bed, my bedroom has, has become kind of a horrible spot. I have something to confess to you that is so embarrassing, so embarrassing. I am almost ashamed to share it, but you know what? I keep it real. I'm going to share it. I haven't done laundry since December. Now, it's piling up. I've got five baskets full. I've got sheets and pillowcases and towels and face cloths, etc. Then I've got my personal things and then I've got my pants and tops and sweaters and blah, 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 blah. <sighs> All over the place. I went down uh, Saturday night, Saturday night, I, it was 1130 and I said, okay, 1130 takes 25 minutes to wash and an hour to drive. So 1230 will be 12, so it'll be one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, I'm doing this quick math in my head. One o'clock in the morning, I can get one load done. Well, actually it turned out that the basket was so full, I got two loads done. 
which scares me because that means that my fuller baskets probably are three, <laughs> three uh, loads to do. Oh, that reminds me. I got to write it down right this minute. Actually, I'm going to put it in my phone right this minute because, oh God, I forgot. I forgot. Um, notes, where are you, you little son of a gun? Uh, to get. No, not there. I hate this notes thing, you know. It's not really uh, conducive to my mental health. Uh, okay, here. Um, it doesn't affect you. I noticed that in editing, but it affects me. My, after a while, my screen goes blank. Okay. Oh, I got those, so I can delete that one. I got the, from Dollar Tree, I got the uh, incense, some more incense. I've been burning it, which seems to eliminate uh, some of the smoke, because you know I smoke. Okay, what was it that I was... What was it that I needed? I know I need um, food bags. I'm just going to put food bags. I don't know what that is. What did I need? Oh my gosh, my train of thought. I just lost it. I was just thinking about it the second that I had to go and pick up. What did I have to go and pick up? I was looking at here. Bedroom. Oh, laundry uh, dryer sheets. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I would think about it dryer sheets okay i don't use my thumbs guys uh what am i dryer can't spell dryer sheets okay done i had to put that in there <laughs> so talking about laundry uh, it's embarrassing that i have that much clothes Although some of it is mums, and I do have to wash it if I want to donate it. I just don't like donating dirty clothes. I think they just throw them out. So, um, so coming on here today was to share with you um, my aftermath of redesigning my room. It is absolutely lovely. I am so pleased with it. Everything that I need to put away, I have a place for. However, when I go through some of my other boxes that I just dumped everything in, I have to decide, do I want to keep all of that or do I just want to keep a few? Do I need that many, oops, that many uh, tea dyed and coffee dyed papers? Or do I just need a few and I can make more as I go along? And that's the whole thing, you see. I was trying to build a stash, but I wasn't using it. So, I have an empty container <laughs> um, that I have been putting my anything tea and coffee dyed. Um, my daughter, I think she's saving some avocado peelings because I don't eat it. Um, for me to, I want to try the avocado dyeing. But to me, the color of the avocado dyeing is the same color as my food coloring um, pinks, because it's kind of a pinkish color. And I can change that pink with the food coloring mixtures. I can change that pink to a salmon color, to a brownish color, to a, you know, mixing colors. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, and I've been keeping, uh, pieces of parchment paper that I've used for one thing or another, and I thought, well, I'll reuse it for some of these smaller items. I don't need to do that. I have enough stored here, and if I need more, I can buy more, but I have, um, sheets of it in my kitchen that I use in my kitchen, and I've got a, a big roll of it here. 
why keep the old stuff, right? Why, why, why am I doing that to myself? And, um, and it's the old adage. It's the old thing we have in our mind. I better keep it just in case. Yeah. That is, I think, a problem I've had for years. Not years. Just, I think, since I started crafting full-time, which has been since I retired. And I think that the whole problems that I come up with for you and share with you is not as drastic as I make it seem. But then on the other hand, at the moment, it does seem drastic. I am pulling my hair out, trying to figure out what am I doing wrong and why? And I know what it is, well, partially. The partial thing is you get it in your head, you watch videos, you're watching your favorite people and they're saving this and, oh, well, we're going to save this for a future project. We're going to save this, uh, these scraps of this for this and we'll need this to build this. So we'll need some cardboard or chipboard etc etc and on and on it goes and when we hear this and if we don't have it or if we have one or two we go oh my god I better go and get more I better start building so then you're preoccupied with your darn cereal boxes that you've got to you know break down and and put somewhere that you're forgetting about the craft you know you're forgetting about doing stuff and never mind about that if you need a piece of cardboard go cut up a cereal box that's in the cupboard i live alone so i'm the only one's going to complain about it right yeah so there's a lot on my on my on my chest that i wanted to talk about um you made some wonderful suggestions one of the best of course is don't buy anything and it's true i'm not buying anything i think i may have hinted at wanting another table i don't need another table I craft there, I do my editing filming there, I do sewing here, I have now brought my iMac in here to do any business stuff I have to do, any video watching I want to watch, any movies, I can put them on while I'm crafting. Um, yeah, so I, I, I guess I guess I want to um, let you know that Although I have days, very frequently I have days when, when emotions overcome me and I don't want to do anything. And then I give myself a kick in the butt, stiff upper lip, let's get on with it and of course, I always say, Mom, give me a hand here. I, I need that. I need you to give me that little push. And she does. And she helps me um, go through things like that. So, I've taken my part, not all. I've taken my office stuff out of um, my bed. Well, part of it. I've taken my iMac, the big thing. I've taken that out of my room. I still have a table in there and I still have papers in there. And I'm thinking of bringing that small table uh, and putting it right here. We're going to get rid of this brown um, cabinet here. And that's going to go into the dining area once I get rid of my day bed. If I can just get rid of it. Maybe I can charge $25, pick it up and come and take it away. Um... I, I liked it because when I was watching uh, the Oriental girls doing uh, ASMR um, crafting and with all the little wooden pieces that they had and leather pouches and da -da 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 -da. I liked it. I liked the whole idea of it. It kind of made me feel like I was in a little, I don't know, a little house where I had just that one spot to keep everything and uh, I don't need it there 
two four. There's two four shelves. I've got two drawers. The drawers, um, one drawer's got sewing. I've got a sewing kit over there. I don't need it to be in that drawer. It's just that when I'm crafting, it's quicker to go to that drawer and pick out the, what I need than to go into the closet, find the box, and go through that, you know. Yeah. I'm babbling on, aren't I? I want to thank you guys so much, so much, for your support, for your kind words. Um, I set up um, another thing I wanted to talk about. I set up memberships, and I haven't any members. Um, I'm not expecting any. I was hoping. I added a new tier, which is newbies, which is only 99 cents a month. And I have been posting, regardless of uh, having uh, members or not, I have been posting videos, chats like this, not this long, um, for members only. So that when anyone does become a member, they can go through all of these fun things that I'm up to, um, things that, you know, a good morning, here I am, um, a look at the um, videos that some, some of my videos don't go up on YouTube, and some do, but some are earlier, you get them earlier, and, um, and I think it would be uh, a fun community to build, and I'm hoping over the year, as we go along, I'm hoping that over the year we do have uh, members that will come in, give it a try. It doesn't hurt to try for a month or two. If it's not what you want, if it's not something that you're interested in, that's fine. You can just quit. It's okay. Um, you can give me suggestions. What would you like to see more of? What, what, what kind of uh, behind-the-scenes things would you like to know about? Um, there's a lot of things that I could be uh, sharing with you on a daily basis, but um, that would come with uh, memberships. And um, as I say, I've got, you know, there's 99 cents. It's $1.99 for the snippets. I think it's $4.99 for the uh, Crafty Crafters. And uh, I can't remember how much it is for the gray power groupies and I'm hoping that once I start building my channel more um, to include not just journals not just paper crafts I want to be able to provide a whole range of things and uh, and show you how easy it is just be creative let your art flow if, if you enjoy doing something, share it. I would love to know what your passions are. I would love to know what you love to do. And uh, things that I did in the beginnings, when I first started this kind of journey into creativity, my creativity was reading. I did a lot of reading and I did a lot of writing. When I was a young girl, I kept a diary. And then as I got older, I kept what we, I always called it a diary. I always did a journal. The proper, 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 no, popular, proper name is journaling. And, um, but never thought of decorating it, although I did scribble in it. You know, I would doodle in it. I would write things and perhaps try and draw something that was related to that day. And then as I got older and I became a mom and I was working and, you know, it, I got busy, but I still made time to read a book. I still made time to do some writing. And then when I was on my own and my children were gone, I started writing poetry, short stories. Um, I found that release, that entering into another world that I create was wonderful. And then I discovered YouTube and I discovered um, paper crafting. And I discovered how fun it is to create something, not just paper crafting, but other things. 
I've seen people upcycle a can into something. And I had a few knickknacks around the house that I found absolutely lovely, but the purpose was I, I, one example, and I wish I still had a copy of it. I, I think it's probably on my old computer that's crashed because there was no iCloud in those days. Um, I had one of those, you know, the little miniature waterfalls that you can plug in, you put water in and you can plug in and sit it on a table that hums annoyingly. Well, I had one and it, it totally died. And I started uh, taking some uh, mm, lessons, I guess we could say. I would research on YouTube on how to do things. And then I would understand their ideas and take it. And I made this waterfall become a waterfall. I can't remember what I used. I don't think it was wax. Uh, to make the waterfall. Isn't that awful? It was too long ago. It was like, you know, eight years ago. Um, but I had it, it was fake water dripping down and I added beautiful blue flowers around it. I decorated it and um, I was offered $40 for it, uh, but I gave it to my daughter-in-law. My daughter-in-law, my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law. Who doesn't speak to me? But anyway, there's a lot, a lot going on. Um, I think that is it for this chat. I think that I have covered everything. Trying to bring to you the real me, the real day, the real day in a life. You know, I fell asleep at 4 o'clock. I'm repeating myself. Fell asleep at 4 o'clock. Set my alarm for 9 and uh, saw nine o'clock and thought, oh, I could be ready in 10 minutes, so I don't need, I fell back to sleep, I woke up, it was like two minutes to 10. I had to get dressed, get out of the house, and get to the doctor's office, which is a 15 minute drive, and I'm thinking, oh my God, my appointment's at 10, 10, 10, in my head, I'm repeating myself, 10, 10, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna be late, and then I got there, and it was 14 minutes when I parked my car, 14 minutes after 10. That's how fast I took every shortcut I could find where there's no traffic. Yeah, good thing I know the city. And, um, and I got there two minutes late, and it was okay. There was nobody else in the office, just his secretary and my doctor. Yeah, and then we sat down. And then he went through, uh, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Mammograms, x-rays, blood work, tetanus shot, blah, blah, blah. It went on and on and on and on. Yeah. And my blood pressure, of course, was way out the roof. I mean, it's usually been fairly normal for my age. Uh, but I think with the stress of what was going on, um, it was through the rock. So he's giving me pills for it to try for a week or two, I think. I think. I don't remember. And I have to take my blood pressure every day. And then at the end of the week, send him a copy of what it is on a daily basis. And da, da, da. so I'm, you know, I'm, I've got my house to keep in order. I've got my purging to do. I've got to get into things. I've got to go through mom's stuff. I've got to contact a lot of uh, people who require uh, legal documents from mom's passing and um, things I can't find and I don't know why I can't find them and getting my YouTube channel going and getting my room cleaned because I can't stand the, the whole hoarding. <sighs> then I have to come home, sit down, have a nice cup of tea, which I'm trying to have my second cup here. Talk to you guys and maybe do a little bit of real life explaining as to um, what happens sometimes when you're doing things at a critical moment in your life. When you're dealing with grief, 
uh, some things are just not a priority. Some things you don't want to think about. Some things you just want to say, come in my house, take it away, and don't bother me, you know? And then there are other times when you want to shuffle through those things and you want to reminisce and you want to have a good cry and you want to, you know. So I may not be the typical craft hoarder in that I'm dealing, but I think all craft hoarders are dealing with something in their life that pushes the organizing of the things that we have on the back burner because we want to do the crafting, make us feel good, stress relief, all that stuff. That's great. But in the back of our mind, we know we have to deal with. And as a grieving daughter, I have to deal with mom's winter clothes that's in the closet, all of her golf plaques and her awards and their beautiful wooden plaques. You know, part of me wants to take off the plaques and save them and maybe repurpose those plaques into something beautiful. Um, you know, that's my train of thought. Should I get rid of it? Should I do this? Instead of throwing it away, maybe I can repurpose it. Maybe I can use it for something beautiful. Maybe I can make something beautiful out of it just by looking at it and feeling the excitement that mom had when she received these awards. And because no one in my family, my brother has Alzheimer's. I haven't visited him since November. Um, and I feel bad about it, but I know, I know I am going to be an emotional wreck. So there's just me and my brother. My children have their life. They don't need anything. A few things my son could use, I think, some some furniture type things um, he could use, which is great. Uh, but a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff. I have got a package uh, with one of those zipper package pouches you can get at Dollar Tree full of my mom's mom's ancestry and there's no one on that side of the family that are alive that want it although I could ask no no she wouldn't she wouldn't want it she's no what do you do as as your relatives pass away and you have a collection of their history, what do you do with it? Any suggestions? What do you do with all the pictures, all the death certificates, marriage certificates, birth certificates, baptismal certificates, on and on and on. And, you know, so those are other things. And it's in the back of my mind, you know, I got to go through that. I got to go through mom's clothes. I got to go through mom's plaques. And only just now have I thought of defacing mom's plaques. And I know that sounds crazy because I would never have thought of that up until this very moment. And I'm writing it down. And I'm actually going to call it deface mom's plaques. Nobody wants them. Nobody. I have no place to put them. And having a memory wall of my mom would just bring me down into a depression. It's crazy. I have her on a mantle. Mom was cremated. She, she created her own. She picked her own urn that has a golfer on it. Mom was an avid golfer. She loved golfing. Um, and she's sitting on my fireplace, my white fireplace. It's a, it's a uh, portable fireplace I guess um, electric fireplace and uh, with flowers I've got pictures of my dad and I got pictures of David her last husband um, all around her I got flowers and so on and it's you know but on the floor right beside her is all of those plaques 
yeah that's what I got to deal with all right guys I have been talking forever I'm sure this is an hour long but I did want to come on and 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 tell you that um, don't worry about my uh, purging because it's begun it has begun and um, the videos I put out are for your entertainment pure and simple entertainment it's real believe me it's real my feelings my anger my frustrations are real but um, the whole process of everything is usually done in one day so while you saw that frustration video you saw me wanting to pull my hair out I wanted to pull my hair out uh, was just the beginning and then I got a knock on the door from my neighbor and she had when I went over and had tea with her one day she had wanted to get rid of it and asked if I wanted it and I was going oh my god is it a corner unit she said yes I said definitely want it now it did have a stand but I don't uh, the stand would bring it up about maybe eight nine inches and I like it that low, like I, that. that is perfect because it still gives a lot of empty space around me on the top. So I like to keep things low. Maybe it's because I'm short. I don't know. Anyway, guys, I have lectured. I have promised. I have um, explained. Is there anything, any questions you want to ask me? Um... There's been a lot of financial issues in the last couple of months that have come up that I've had to deal with. And um, it's funny, for 30 years, or more, more probably, uh, I must have been from 38 to 60, okay? Let's just say from 38 to 60, nope, later than that, 38 to 65. I lived on my own. I worked all day. I did other things. I had other hobbies. I was busy. I, my children were building their own families, um, lived out. I was on my own and I did just fine. I did things on my own. I did just fine. And I never ever needed to ask for help. And even if I did, I would never ask for help because I knew I could do it myself. I knew it. It's just the right frame of mind, get rid of the negative, think of only the positive, and get on with it. And I lived quite well. And I was healthy. I exercised, walked a lot, all that stuff. Um, then when mom came to live with me, um, I became the parent. And I wasn't used to being a parent anymore. I had done that. It was in my past. And although mom still had most of her faculties f for up until maybe the last three years, uh, mom could do her own banking. She could do a lot of things on her own. Um, she would suggest we buy this or that at the grocery store. She was really, you know, it was, it was learning to love my mom again because we had been apart for so long. I mean, we keep in contact, but you're not living and breathing every single day with that person. So there was a lot of adjustment going on for me. And then it got to the point where I was, I was uh, blessed and grateful to have my mom, knowing that she was declining. Um, difficult days, definitely difficult days. When a person has Alzheimer's or dementia and they don't understand and you're patiently trying to use all of the tricks that you've learned through health care, etc., to try and encourage them to do whatever it was that needed to be done, like getting washed and eating and, you know, her favorite thing was going for a drive every day. That She loved it. Thank God we got out of the house, um, even in the winter. But um, after her passing... I am now in adjustment mode. I am now in a 
financial different position. I am now um, dealing with uh, outside sources that are, you know, hounding me for information and being the true me, um, I deal with the important things right away. And then if they come back with more, I'm thinking, don't you have enough information? And I'll put it aside and say, I'll deal with you later. And then something else comes out. I'll deal with you later. So now I've got a pile of deal with you laters for mom. And I've got a pile of deal with it now purging. And um, yeah, I'm going to be okay. It's just I wanted to share a little bit of my life with you that I haven't done in a long time and to and to maybe help some of you understand that yes I'm 73 years old but I am quite capable of dealing with my own nonsense it's just this is YouTube we're sharing our life I'm sharing my daily I'm not always frustrated. Some days I'm in here and I'm amazed, absolutely amazed at the things that I can accomplish and the videos that I can put up with, for you. So, um, no, uh, there is no pity party here. There is no um, getting down on anyone. It's just a matter of adjustment. And that is where I'm going through that adjustment. And it's funny, if I had to move, I would be the happiest person in the world for only one reason. I can purge because that is the most fun thing. While you're packing stuff, you're going, nope, I don't need this anymore. Nope, I don't need this. I'm not a hoarder that way. But because I am going to be here for a long time, because this, this apartment is a two-bedroom apartment great for mom and I. Uh, when we first started here, it was like $13.90 uh, a month, including parking and a storage room. $13.85, I think, when we moved in here in 2017. Um, my daughter-in-law's brother and his wife came to look at some apartments here, and they were looking for a two-bedroom. We are now, over the years, it's been eight years, so from 20 or whatever it is 2017 to today six years seven years I always forget from 2017 January 1st 2017 to today 2024 our rent is now 1515 a month one thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars a month that does not include my cable that does not include um, my phone it does not include my internet that is only, or my heating, that is only my rent, my parking, and my storage room downstairs. And that's only like $15 a month. So to move into here now, and it's a lovely location. It's a great location. It's away from the hustle and bustle. And yet four streets over, you've got everything. You've got all your stores, your 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 conveniences you've got your your garages your whatever you need your medical is just up the street a big medical building um you know but we're in enough into a little community here that is really quite comfortable and i like it a lot um so i want to stay here and any time i had uh been able to save money to be able to afford when the car breaks down it was depleted in january when i had to get new tires um i had to get new winter tires i had no choice so they're kind of winter tires but all seasonal is kind of one of those whatever and then my brakes went on my car and they had to get done another eight nine hundred dollars to get that done and that's just the front brakes. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to have to have more done. But you'll see that, you know, all of these things build up in the worries. And so asking for help. How? How? Why would I impose my 
easily uh, removed stress by dealing with things. So that's why I don't ask for help. I don't want to impose on anyone. And I do it myself. And I've been doing it for 40 years. 40, I'm thinking 35. Uh, I'm thinking 30, at 30, roughly. Roughly age 30 to 35. From then on, I was on my own, raising my two children, working, doing my thing, being a productive member of society. Now I'm retired, and it's been um, 13 years that I've retired, and in that time I have done my taxi service, I have done my pickup service, grocery bill service, babysitting service, all of those things. And now it's time for me, although I do have a babysitting service coming in July. My daughter and her husband are celebrating their 20th, 20th anniversary, and they're going to Ireland and Scotland. And Scotland, of course, is where my daughter's ancestry, my husband was Scottish, that's where uh, she's going to be going, and they're going to spend two weeks, her mother-in-law. Uh, Lorraine is looking after the kids for the first week, and the second week I will be there. Trying to be a mother again. That stresses me out. What do I feed them? What are they? They're grown men, young men now, except for the youngest, but he's 10. These are all grown young men. They don't need nannies, little silly games anyway okay that's it for me i am sorry i did go on it's over an hour i apologize but i thought there was too many things we needed to address too many things i needed to share with you and to thank you for your tips and your suggestions and believe me, they're not new. I have thought of them. Um, I just have to do things uh, the best way I know how and the best way I can handle it. I want to thank you for sticking around. If you're still here, gosh, give me a thumbs up if you're still here. Uh, that would be like totally unbelievable that I still have people listening to me babble. I'm loving this layout. I'm loving how I have organized this to the point where journaling right here. All of this is journaling stuff. Okay. Behind me, of course, on the shelves with all my boxes is more of other types of crafting, whether it be some material uh, some fabrics of some kind. The shelf in here has got my benches and any other items that I am going to be repurposing is in this shelf, and that is what it's designated for. The only difference is at the bottom, but then it's part of it, is all my paints. My paints, my gel, gel plate, a jelly plate, I guess you call it, my jelly plate, but everything here, all of this, has to do with repurposing, redesigning, etc. And then the rest is craft fair suggestions, paper crafting, and of course a lot of excess journaling. Perhaps I'll use this stuff. And I may have to go through all of that too. So anyway, I want to thank you so much for being patient. I was going to go live, but I know, I know if I went live, I would be bubbling. I'd need to have a box of Kleenex beside me because there would be things I'd be sharing on a more personal level that perhaps I wouldn't be sharing here, even though you've seen the little bit of tears but by talking with you and going through things and allowing my brain to kind of calm down and focus on getting the job done. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Consider memberships if you wish. It's totally voluntary. 
try it for a month or two see if it's worth what what uh, I'm offering you and um, it's up to you and if if by chance the occasional time thank you Carmen for your dear sweet contribution I have Kofi which is buy me a cup of tea um, anytime you can just throw that in there to help me help my channel and um, yeah I think I've covered everything I'm supposed to do this every video and I don't I don't like to pressure people but um, I do do some fun things behind the scenes and I do have a little bit of fun sharing the videos ahead of time for you so that you can um, get a get a feel more of my little community here and and my life and me all right love you guys comments are so well appreciated your tips your ideas everything I I am so grateful for you and I hope as my word is I hope you have a beautiful week you have beautiful time share your heart share your love and be kind I've got this little sign here it's so cute I hope it's not backwards here but it says be kind I need to put that on I need to put it up here because <laughs> this is probably going to be going right here on my phone be kind remind me thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you next time bye for now